Hello all you lovely happy people, Ollie here. It's been a very chilled out month on the channel, so it's time to have a look at some of the comments you've been leaving. This month I launched a new series called The Philosophy of YouTube, which is taking a more critical look at the institution of YouTube, taking some philosophical concepts and applying them to it. And I did a video called YouTube is not expressive, which was about the difference between uh, expression and communication. And uh, Bulletproof Blouse asked, if we, YouTubers, do something on a platform that is owned by Google, does that make us complicit in whatever Google does? Ooh, isn't that the million dollar question? Um, this is a question that I think about a lot, and I really don't know the answer to that, because Google, the company, does do some pretty shady stuff. Well, if you listen closely, you can hear the sound of my video being demonetized, even as I record it. I don't know the answer to that question, however, I hardly ever see anyone even talking about it. At YouTube events like Summer in the City and so on that I've been to, I, I hardly ever see anyone talking about Google the company and the fact that we are workers working on YouTube for Google, a private company who do other stuff. There's, there's not really any mention of that. I also don't see many people talking about the material conditions that make our jobs possible, like who actually makes our laptops, who actually makes our cameras, these sorts of things don't tend to be discussed. That's what I'm curious about. Those are the kinds of conversations that I'd like to be trying to bring to YouTube, especially with this series. Deegan Knoll enjoyed the shout out I gave to Jim Sterling. Yeah, I followed Jim's work for for years actually. Um, it's weird because I don't I don't play very many video games, and when I do, they tend to be like really. I tend to be very behind the times. Like I only really played the Arkham games like last year, year before maybe? And yet, I, I always watch the Jimquisition every Monday and uh, I listen to the Podquisition and I listen to the Spin-Off Doctors as well, like I hardly ever miss one. So, in fact, I think there might be a new, I think there might be a new Spin-Off Doctors. Is there a new Spin-Off Doctors today? I can listen to that while I'm editing, it'll be good fun. Yes! Ben Saf asked, isn't it a bit restricting to require that YouTubers make things only that benefit their audience? Well, uh, I guess this is my bad. Maybe I didn't quite sort of communicate what I was trying to... I didn't quite communicate what I was trying to say about communication. I wasn't so much trying to say that we should only make things that benefit our audiences, because, you know, things can just be sort of neutral, not everything has to be a sort of moral lesson, things can just be entertaining. But what I was wondering was what would happen if we, not only YouTubers, but YouTube staff as well, put the realisation that YouTube is other-oriented, that it is communicative, what happens if we put that on the front foot? rather than what I see at the moment, which is a more, an emphasis more on expression. I'm like, what, what happens? What can we learn about YouTube and ourselves? What it does, what its moral demands might arise out of it if we put communication at the forefront of our minds. Eric Smith and a few other people asked, uh, is it really true that a YouTube video is either always only communicative or always only expressive? This was my fault, I should have been clearer with that. Um, I do think that the same YouTube video can be one and the same, it can be both, it can be slightly more than one than the other. Again, what I was trying to get at is what happens if we if we emphasize the communication angle and look at it in terms of communication, what happens then? Monkey Who Would Be King asked if I could say a little bit more about how LGBT art and uh, indigenous art and art from perspectives of uh, people who've traditionally been oppressed and silenced, how that can be challenging even if it's more expressive than communicative. So when I wrote that sentence in the script, I had in mind uh, an exhibition I went to see in the Auckland Museum of Art. Uh, shout out to anybody watching this in New Zealand. And uh, I think it was on the ground floor of that museum, there was a whole section which was devoted to Maori artists. And there was specifically a few exhibits about um, the historical theft of Maori lands. And I was struck by the fact that um, even though I didn't really know the history in that much detail and wasn't really able to absorb all the details of the message being communicated there, I was nevertheless very conscious of the fact that, you know, even relatively recently, there just wouldn't have been a section of Maori artists. They just wouldn't have been in the museum. So just by existing in that space, it was challenging very old preconceived notions of what art should be and like power relations to art, even though to me specifically some of the details of the message weren't being communicated. So it was it was expressing something and it was doing sort of a valuable social uh, function, even though it was less communicative specifically to me. I hope that helps, I hope it makes it slightly clearer. I also did a video on bullying and harassment online and how we on YouTube and off YouTube talk about it, and CC said that uh, harassment is part of life and we shouldn't pretend it doesn't exist 
and if people don't like it, they can just turn off their laptops. Yes, uh, harassment is a part of life, but the point is that it shouldn't be, and although we may never be able to create a world in which there is no kind of harassment or bullying, every step we take to that and get closer to it will make the world slightly better. And if we put in a little bit of work, we could take steps towards that. So like, what? why would we not, why would we not do that? Also, not everyone can walk away to the extent that I think you think they can. For those of us whose jobs are online and having to involve having to sit down and interact with people online every single day, turning it off and walking away isn't really an option. Similarly, for people who do a lot of work online, like journalists, just not interacting with that whole thing, it's not, it's not really an option. And again, even if it was, we shouldn't really have to take that. So perhaps this commenter was having a bad day or something, so I'm not gonna have a go, but I, I think that attitude is less than helpful. Nathan King and Mr. Martin uh, pointed out very truly, in fact, that I at no point in my video defined bullying or harassment, and you are quite right. Uh, I did not. I was responding to um, I was responding to a panel at somewhere in the city, as I said, about bullying and harassment, and and that panel, to my memory, didn't define either of them either, and. That's interesting because although we never really defined it, everybody seemed to have a very clear idea of what we were talking about. But of course, if we were to draw up policies or kind of guidelines for uh, moderation of a community, we would need to have some kind of working definition as to what we were talking about. So that's a very, that's a very good and interesting thought-provoking point. R Sato seventy four quite rightly brought me up on something, and this was this is my favourite comment of the week. They noted that I rarely ridicule people. I you know I sometimes have a cheeky pop every now and again, but overall I try, and I hope I succeed, to keep the tone of what I'm saying quite light and sweet. However, some YouTubers that I have recommended or even worked with in the past don't do that. And some of them to do a little bit mean sometimes, so how do I square that? When I started my channel, I, I made a promise to myself that I would never use the channel to deliberately try and make anyone feel bad. I, I had seen big YouTube channels in, in the past, even not necessarily without meaning to, just because of their size, draw a lot of attention and to people and make them feel small and make them feel insecure. And I, and I, I promised myself I didn't ever want to try and do that. I hope I have stuck to that promise. I do occasionally screenshot ridiculous comments and, and make fun of them on Twitter, but I uh, usually remember to anonymize whoever's left it because I don't want people sort of, what's the what's the term, like raiding, when you, when you, dogpiling, that's the term I'm looking for. I don't want people sort of dogpiling. I don't engage with uh, aggressive replies or really with reply videos. Uh, I, I'm very careful about what I say on live streams. I don't want to engage in YouTube drama specifically. I'm not kind of interested in in getting involved in that. You know, I have my friends who are YouTubers and, and behind the scenes sometimes I have friends who are YouTubers who are subject to kind of personal attacks and I do commiserate with them and talk to them about that. But I try and keep that behind the scenes. Basically, if I don't have something positive to say about somebody, not necessarily an idea, not necessarily an institution, because there's criticism there, then criticism's important, but an individual, if I don't have something positive to say about them, especially if they're a YouTuber, then I will usually try to say nothing. I don't always succeed in that, and, and those of you who are particularly attentive might sometimes be able to kind of read between the lines a little bit, but uh, I, I try that, and that's something that recently as well I have been uh, redoubling my efforts on. That's sometimes very difficult, and it sometimes means there are things that I'd like to say, but I don't. Uh, and not, I, d I don't think that would be a good. I don't think it would be a good world if everybody adopted that policy. Um, I, you know, some sometimes people need to <laughs> need to be criticised, I guess. And and but I tr I try not to do call outs, and it's it's not a moral thing necessarily. It's kind of. If I'm perfectly honest with you, it's mainly just sort of my own my own peace of mind. Not every YouTuber does do that, and I don't think I don't think that every YouTuber should do that. Um, but uh, you noticed uh, Miles Power and um, the Messianic Manic are two YouTubers who I've worked with in the past and who I'm sort of friends and colleagues with, who do occasionally get the knives out a little bit more. And you asked, how do I square that? I have to say, I'm not all that caught up on the Messianic Manic and Miles Power's recent stuff, uh, so I can't speak as to the content or the tone of what they've been putting out recently. I, I think this is a question I'm 
gonna have to live for myself. I'm sorry I don't really have a more satisfying answer to it than that. So thank you for asking that, because even though I don't really have a hugely satisfying answer to it, um, I am very satisfied in insofar as the question has been asked. Just drop my pen. Those are all the comments I have time for. I have a big audition tomorrow, so I need to go and prepare for that and practice my singing. So uh, that audition is tomorrow as far as I'm concerned, but will be yesterday as far as you're concerned. Uh, so uh, wish me luck or commiserations, depending on what happens. And without further ado, I will leave you with the credits.